Hey guys. Okay, so I'm sitting out my outside in my garage right now and um I just have this recurring theme that's going on for the last couple of days and it's finally like, okay, I have to take a pause. I have to get this out uh, so that I can continue with my day. I just feel like the Lord's really impressing it upon me um to to speak some of these things out. Okay, so Back in 2019 um, is when I started having like tons of shakes and quakes dreams, earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, floods, uh, like all of these things that were going to take place on the earth plane. Um, some of them felt very literal, but then some also felt just symbolic, very uh, metaphorical of things that we're actually going through now. And so um, I had this journal entry when I would, when I wake up in the middle of the night, um, sometimes I put them in my phone, sometimes I like write them down in a literal journal. And I had one that was called a divided nation. And there were certain dreams that I felt that I was supposed to put into this divided nation. And I was taken back to that a couple days ago and have really just been praying about what to say about it and press in. And honestly, I just feel like I'm supposed to share what was on it. So um, there was only four dreams that I had put on that one. And these probably six months, eight months that these dreams came through. Um, and, and of course, I've had other dreams that are associated with this stuff since then. And just, you know, still receiving revelation and things like that. But what I wanted to share is the divided nation dreams. And then I'm going to share one specifically about the New Madrid fault line that I felt like I was supposed to like, just, you know, speak about. Okay, so the first one was, um, and, and these two things have actually happened already. Hi, <laughs> sorry, my neighbor's walking by. Um, so two things have already happened and two of these on the divided nation are still, um, I'm still looking for, right? Okay, so the first one was that we would have a civil war that would be caused by our media through a virtual cannon. And so I had seen this, these people that were dressed in red and blue, just think about the symbology of um, the civil war that we had in America. And then um, the, this, this virtual cannon that was out in this field, like someone had just released it. And when that cannon went off, all these people started fighting. And I was like yelling at them going, what are y'all doing? You liked each other yesterday and now you're fighting. And so that was the first dream about the civil war that would be caused by the virtual cannon that was put out over the TV screen. And so we have literally seen that happen. We've been living in it for the last couple of years, right? At, at a major scale, it's been way longer than that, but um, for more people to see over the last two years. The second one was, um, what was the second one? I just went blank. Oh, the, I saw nanobugs that came in and it closed down businesses, uh, Walt Disney World and people had to stay in their homes. Okay. We've been living in that for the last two years, right? So we've, we've seen that happen. Okay. So the next two though, still waiting for one was a Jubilee and I've shared that dream very detailed. Um, it was one of the first videos I put on here about, it, I think it's even called Jubilee. So I'll put the link here and you can go find that if you haven't watched it. Um, and then the other one was about the New Madrid fault line that it was going to crack open and it would, it basically would be a nation divided, which was how I even got the title of a nation divided that was in this journal entry. Um, after I saw that, I also had one more dream that I saw a new White House had been built in Texas and that the stock market had moved to Texas. Now, what's interesting about that is after I had that dream, um, Governor Abbott in Texas actually had a meeting with NASDAQ and they put out all of these um, news articles and stuff about actually considering this in the NASDAQ market moving to Dallas. So just like kind of leaving that out there. Haven't really pressed in or asked any more questions. Haven't had any more dreams about that since then. That was in, I don't remember, 2020 maybe. I don't know. Okay, maybe 2019. So I want to talk specifically though for a second about the new Madrid one because that one has been the one that's kind of been on me the last few days and I've really been praying and pressing into and asking more questions about because um, it could be very literal, but it could also be very symbolic. And so just think about that as I tell you about that dream. So I go to sleep that night. I had really been praying a lot about earthquakes. I've been having a lot of words around it. I've, I've really just been seeking revelation and wisdom around what are you trying to say with this? And um, I was taken above the earth. I'm looking down at a map of the United States. And um, then it became, it turned into like a, a computer screen. Almost, you know, if you, you get on your phone and you move it like this and so you can zoom in. And that's what I was doing. And I zoomed in onto the Missouri Arkansas border and I saw the New Madrid fault line. Basically, like it just went poof, and it broke open. And it looked like a, a small form of a, like a new Grand Canyon had formed there. And 
as that like busted open, I saw this line kind of go through the earth like that. It went all the way straight to the Washington Monument in DC. And as it hit the Washington Monument, that thing just like, it, it like shook back and forth and then pow, it like crumbled to the ground. And so um, that was the first part of that dream. Then I was taken back over to the map. I'm looking down and I see Oklahoma, Nevada, and California specifically. They started having all of these small tremors. Now, I remember asking in the dream, like, like, is this literal? What about all the people? What are we going to do? Um, uh, uh, like, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? How are we going to prepare? Um, as, as I zoomed in closer to see that, I saw a lot of chaos. People were scared. They were worried. They were fearful. Um, people who weren't paying attention kept saying, you know, and, and, and blaming things like God's judging us and all of these things were happening. And as I remember watching people do that, I, I was now standing on the ground and I'm looking up at the clouds and they're coming closer to me. Like they keep coming closer and they're gray and they're black and they're ugly. And I see a lion form in the cloud and I, I begin to get very fearful in the dream and I'm sending it away from me. I'm, I'm saying like, you know, I rebuke you, you know, and I, I'm actually yelling in the dream, Yeshua, 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 like come, come. And as I did that, the cloud kept getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And if you've ever seen, um, Narnia, you know, Aslan, the lion in that movie who symbolizes Christ, that lion steps out of cloud in my dream and starts talking to me. And I'm like, I remember being like that, like, oh my gosh, like, wow, you're talking. Um, but I knew symbolically what that stood for. And so um, as Aslan started speaking to me in the dream, he said, people are going to say that I caused this, but I did not. And um, I remember having like just a sense of security and peace I just fell over me in that moment of knowing like everything's going to be okay. Um, a after I saw that, I remember then seeing a flood that happened from Houston down to, I'm sorry, from Minneapolis down to Houston. And it flooded all the way down the I-35 corridor. That felt very symbolic to me um, because of what floods symbolize and water symbolizes the cleansing, the purifying, um, uh, um, placing water on something that needs, that, that's dehydrated in essence, that needs to be hydrated again. And then um, I remember like zooming all the way back out and, and just like looking over all of the destruction, but knowing that good things were going to come out of it. Like I just had this knowing that um, what was used for harm and death and destruction was going to be used for good. And, and that's what Aslan symbolized to me in that dream. And so as I came out of that dream, I, I prayed for really hard for a couple of days um, because I kept thinking, if I share this with people, like it's going to make them fearful and scared. And I never want to cause fear over anyone because, you know, if you're the person having the dream, you see um, a greater picture. You see more revelation in it. And and for me, it didn't symbolize um, this, this, this big drama of, of horrible, like the, the world is ending and America's done for. What it symbolized to me was the destruction of something to bring about the rebirth because this year has been all about rebirth to me. That was the word that I have received over and over. And as we're entering spring right now, we're coming out of winter where those things are, are dead and dying and they were in hibernation. We're now coming into spring for the rebirth and for those seeds that have been dormant. Um, they're going to start sprouting up right now. And so, um, and, and I actually had this dream too. It was in July. It was in the, in the summer. Um, and that's always symbolized like a fun time for me, like um, a, a, a place of like people want to like, let's go to the summer and, and let's have the beach and let's, you know, be out in the sun and all of these things. Um, but it's also very symbolic to me, too, because of the sun. And I've had dreams where the sun um, has actually we're having them right now. We're having solar flares right now. If you've not been paying um, attention to any of that type of weather, like space weather. Um, but the CMEs, which are coronal mass ejections, come off the sun. It's like a plasma. And so it, it leaves the sun, it hits Earth. Um, the Schumann resonance has really been spiking. And that's the only way I know how to explain that is kind of like um, the Earth's heartbeat. And so as those things, like that energy in the plasma from the sun comes off, it hits Earth, it causes physical changes. And I know a lot of people have been having um, body aches and pains and symptoms and headaches. So you have to realize when those things hit, it, we sit on the Earth's atmosphere, right? So like we're physically on the Earth. So anytime something like that hits, even if you can't see it, 
you're going to feel it. Some people are more sensitive to it than others, um, especially if you're a feeler or an empath or something like that, and, and you feel those things, uh, you might be feeling some of that. And so um, some of these dreams I had was about the sun and the sun causing um, um, some of these energy centers with the earth to, it's like if you get mad about something, you're like, ah, like you have to release that energy, like, oh my gosh. So that's part of like, um, fault lines and, and fissures and energy centers of the earth or volcanic eruptions, um, even some of the bad weather that we've been having, like the energy that's in the atmosphere from the sky down to the earth, the things that are inside the earth coming up and erupting out, that that some of those are just natural processes. And that was one of the things that the Lord has really been speaking to me about is it's very easy to say, oh, it was a judgment, um, man did this. But there's also, not that there's not, but there's also things that are just natural, a natural process, a natural cleansing, a natural purification. And um, that's one of the things I just sit in with this. So I knew after those dreams that, I mean, it's the same theme of everything that I've talked about on here from the financial system to the um, governmental system, um, that those things were going to have a rebirth in them. But how do you have a rebirth in something? Like some of those things gotta come down. It's the miracles that we've been praying for, that we've been seeking, that we've been asking. Um, some of those things can be very uncomfortable. But at the same time, um, are we willing to be uncomfortable to rebirth some of these things that are going to be amazing for us as we move forward um, into sovereign beings, into sovereign nation states, into um, getting rid of some of these corrupt uh, places in our in our culture, our society that have kept people in fear and bondage and, and mind control, frankly, of, of not allowing them to to have their power. And it's it's right now about us call your power back. Stop giving evil and darkness things and be the light in those places. Call your power back and stand firm in those. Um, and, and if we begin to see some of these things happen and happen or the earth rumble in, in any way or, you know, any floods or any tsunamis or, or anything like that, just, you know, pray. Like, what is what is your position to pray in that? Um, what are you to to learn from that? How are you to partner with God in that? And um, we each have a calling. We each have an assignment in this time. And it's just, you know, um, one of my assignments is, is I see things in dreams like this. And then I pray about them. And some of them I feel like I'm to pray against because does that destruction really have to happen? Um, or is it destined because it's just a natural process of the earth? And, and, and this is just, it is what it is. Or can we say, hey, I see um, a group of people doing something that's not so great and we're not going to do that. We're just not gonna do that anymore. Um, like even like I was thinking about this, like all of these world orders and and been thinking about, you know, like the kingdom reset and the great reset. And a couple days ago, somebody like, I see the kingdom reset coming, but isn't the great reset kind of already here with these world orders? Because I'm like looking at all the stuff going on and I'm like, are we kind of in that already? How long have we been in that? <laughs> I mean, when you really look at some of these things that we're asking to come down. And then we were looking at the Great Reset where they're trying to take even more control into things. And I'm like, yeah, we're still doing that. You know, um, it's, it's like you can either get in doom and gloom prophecy and think that the world's ending and everything's over for you. Or you can go, oh my gosh, we're going into the greatest wealth and health transfer, transfer that this world has ever seen. And I get to be a part of it or my life is over and I'm just going to let this fire destroy me. Or you can let the fire refine you because we're all being thrown in the fire right now, individually, collectively together. Um, uh, just the earth in general, the, the heavens and the spiritual realms and everything that's going on right now, like it's all stirred up. And so it's just like, where are you going to be in it? What are you going to allow to consume you? Uh, what kind of, of, of eyes do you have? Are you looking at death and destruction? Or are you looking at the rebirth of all things in the most amazing time in human history that you get to be a part of? Because that's what I'm looking at, the most amazing time. And we might have some trials and we might have some really hard things, but together we can get through it all. And it's gonna be amazing. And just keep your eyes and your ears open. C continue to be prayed up. Keep your sandals of peace on. Don't give your peace away to anybody and call your power back. Know who you are. And we're gonna get through this. So, all right. Um, I'm just praying for all of you, praying for all of us, uh, speaking peace and love and joy and, you know, asking for Christ to fill your hearts. So you guys have a blessed one.